Now, a Met police officer charged with murdering the rapper Chris Cabba has been named for the first time. He's Martin Blake, previously only referred to as NX121, but a judge lifted reporting restrictions in the interest of open justice. Cabba was struck in the head by a single gunshot following a pursuit in Streatham, South London, back in September 2022. The trial is due to begin on October the 2nd, after Blake pleaded not guilty to murder. Joining me now is Harry Tangy, former armed response officer and author. Harry, um, good afternoon to you. It's a, I mean, it's a tricky one. This is about open, uh, open justice, as I think the phrase goes, uh, versus the uh, potential problems of naming an officer. And the fact that it's an officer is relevant to the anonymity that was being sought. Would that be fair? Yeah, it is. I mean, I was listening to Alex Dean, your political correspondent, <clears throat> who really says, well, you know, it goes to uh, a jury and then they've been found not guilty. The horror of a police officer, especially an armed response officer, dealing with the most violent gang members or whatever, generally, day after day in their career, of going to prison and the suicide rate in policing as it is. The slight difference that Alex has failed to appreciate is this is a police officer that we all ask to go out and do these jobs that we wouldn't necessarily want to do ourselves. And that is different from a random person in the street shooting someone dead, saying they had a, an excuse for it, and then being charged for murder. And my, my concern is, and the concern of many armed officers out there who are dropping their weapons left, right and centre, I can tell you, mm. is that the, the level of responsibility is being shoved up a level because it's for the, the public interest. Whereas decisions were being made by the CPS that there's no further action and there might um, be an inquest, for example. Now that I we fear, we can't say for sure at this stage, is being pushed up to a court. And by all means, if they're innocent, the jury will let them off. The horror of that sleepless nights thinking you're going to prison as a police officer, let alone that, is horrendous. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have thought, to be honest, Harry, that it would have even taken... Uh, I agree with you, by the way, I, that it even... Wouldn't it even take an illegal brain to work out that, hang on a second, if you're an armed officer, you, you deal with some of the worst people in society, you're up against them, they have a, a, a their own network of other people. You start naming a person, it, like that you'll find out where they live, and even if that person, through good evidence, is found not guilty, then in the interim period, we know that this has happened before to individuals, but police officers sit in a particular, particularly precarious place on this one, that it's not going to take much for somebody to go, ah, this is the person that did this to my mate. We'll go round there and put their windows in or, you know, we'll intimidate the kids on the way to school. I mean, there's, re there's really rather obvious reasons why, firstly, giving out somebody's name is, is going to be tricky, but giving out somebody's name who's a serving police officer is mm. potentially very dangerous. There's, it's old legislation. I, if legislation is the right word. The judge is following. We all knew as farms officers and we were all told that there's no guarantee of anonymity and there would have to be sort of a direct threat for that to happen. Now, most policing, they do get threats. You know, I got them all the time. Um, and so this judge has decided that those threats aren't sufficient enough. Um, and he's looked at the intelligence material and it's not a real and immediate risk for the defendant mm. and the family. Um, and so to mitigate any risk, he's not going to release the address or the photograph. Well, this was fine before the Internet, which is probably when the legislation was made. Yep. All you need to know is a person of that name down the street of yours, it's on social media, it's spread around, and before you know it, all those people who have got agendas and those activists and those people who really don't like the police, especially the armed police, and maybe organised crime people, have the address and the name of this individual, and God forbid if he's got school kids at the school, they're going to be bullied, your dad's a murderer, I've heard all this before with police officers, it, it is the most, it, it needs updating. And if you want a reflection of how the reaction is out there, there's a Telegraph um, uh, article recently, six applications for armed response in the Met when they expected the usual 150 to 250. Consider also there's a natural 10% wastage every year of armed response. Nobody's applying, everyone's running. 
And yeah. we are a lot more in danger on our streets because of it, because we've cannibalized within the police. We've turned on our own. We haven't given them the support. We haven't. It's been a one sided argument from the start. And this is where we are. And we're going to have to we're going to have to deal with the repercussions of that. Yeah, indeed. Uh, and of course, it's a completely voluntary uh, application to, uh, to to join the the, the, uh, the, the armed police. Uh, and the police do need and, and other officers. And you're absolutely right, Ian. And, and if I could just add, yes, it's voluntary. And I joined the armed response. I was in for 23 years. I was an operational farms commander, like a team leader. I was farms tactics advisor. I was a VIP protection officer for all the royals and government officials. And um, and it was a sense of pride, that teamwork, it's a cliche, but it's that teamwork. There was no other job in the world that was so responsible that you made the decision and the training that it was so much trade, well, 14 initial weeks uh, for just the most basic course um, before all the other stuff. So you're losing a lot of experience out there. Yeah. But the refresher training, four full days, every six weeks, my migraine stopped when I left the police. <laughs> I enjoyed it, but you were tested just as much of when, well, 80% of it was when not to shoot. Of and course. those scenarios were assessing you so you could actually decide. And I'm slightly concerned now that an officer may wait just an extra second because they don't want to be charged with murder and they don't want their, release, their, their, their names released and their kids. Am I going to hesitate? Is my colleague now going to get shot? Is a member of public going to get shot? Am I going to get shot? This is a really serious situation and it needs to be dealt with. Indeed. I suppose, Harry, the, the opposite side of this is, is that, well, there's lots of people who could argue that they are in a compromised position or they are an accelerated attraction to the, the wrong people. Um, if we followed the logic, we wouldn't be naming anybody in courtrooms. And that is the reason why the press had an interest in naming this officer, because the, the precedent is so awful to think of I think having a, this, a... this snowballing anonymity effect which could extend to yeah, all sorts of people. But there's a very clear distinction. And this is why police officers should be treated as witnesses until there is clear evidence by the initial investigating officers that this officer, a, an officer has gone, or has gone rogue and this is completely out of the ordinary. But when we've sent them to incident, spontaneous incidents, time after time after time, day after day after day, and they make a decision. Now, in training, you then say, well, why did you consider that? Did you consider that? What about this? Why did you do that? That's in training. In real life, everything is happening. Now, 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 go, go, go. This is happening. What's your reaction? And then you've got five years of careful analysis by the barristers. They've been ready to accept that, willing to accept that. But this at least have the protection of a decision being made early on, like it has been. And we don't know for sure with the Chris Cabot one, so we won't talk about that one specifically. But if you are charged, at least give them the respect of anonymity. Because, OK, well, it will be past that argument because you won't have any armed response officers. And they'll have to level lower the requirements of those applicants and the abilities of that skill level, just as they have had to do with police recruitment in order to get the numbers. Do we want that either? It's a fair point to finish on. Listen, Harry, thank you. Um, we will speak again, I'm sure. Harry Tangy, former firearms officer and author with us here on Talk TV.